So yesterday we've had a nice little move up. We had a conference call Wednesday. Um, yesterday we went over this in the trade room, how the market was forming a symmetrical wedge. And then I had a target of 66 at this level up here when we were inside the wedge. Instead of breaking that wedge, we can look for a movement up. Um, this is the um, automated strategy that comes out that everybody has, all the members you guys have. These are the same settings I gave you, the last target being 1,000. Um, some use the target of 48, which is fine. This is off the 120 Rinko chart. So I caught it long yesterday uh, on the indicator and also the automated strategy that you have. These are the exact same settings that I went over on Wednesday. So if you didn't attend the Wednesday conference call, a lot of traders that don't log in this room that are members, go to daytradingthefutures.com. And uh, that is under videos. So just go to daytradingthefutures.com. And it's under videos. Uh, I would replay that conference call because um, – all members should play that because I actually give you the settings uh, in that conference call that you can start out using. You don't have to use them, uh, but it's a good place to start to show you how to forward test and back test. We did back test that uh, uh, for everybody. I let it run on replay from uh, when the contract rolled over here, the June contract. We did replay that from March 20th when it rolled over all the way to Wednesday. I showed every single trade that it took and we went over the results on that and uh, I left that in the room and it's also in the conference call. So if you want to check that out and if you want to go back on market replay, if you have the software and replay that uh, from those dates with those exact settings, you can see every single trade it took from 1.30 a.m. Eastern all the way to 4 p.m. Eastern to get an idea how the software works. Okay, so that being said, um, so we'll plug that in. You can see this week's activity. Let's see the trading activity this week uh, with those settings. We, we had a nice little trade to the upside. That was over a 30-point trail run potential yesterday on this setup because it broke out of my supply line, and I actually had a target. I'm going to show you how you can use these supply-demand lines for big gaps or holes in the market. This was actually projected before this even happened. Um, this is projected here while I was in the symmetrical wedge, and my projection was this big hole in the market up here. I'll show you how I projected that yesterday uh, in the, on the mic in the room, and we'll show you how you can do it on your own. Uh, but this week, like I said, we, um, we, we, we had um, a nice trade, some trades to the upside here, trades to the downside. The trail is a key. If you're going to run the automated strategy, the trail is the key. That is definitely the key to the strategy. Trying to get that last runner to run um, just so when we do get stop outs on these, uh, the trail, the initial trail will be your initial stop out unless you use a hard stop. But the key is the runners, obviously. We, we want to try to get in these runners that, uh, that, 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 that have a, you know, a potential move up and down like yesterday into the close. You know, this got long at, uh, what, around 11.03 in the morning Eastern. It stayed long all the way into the close on that runner. So we, that, that's something you want to do. But visit uh, J Trade in the Futures. We do have that Wednesday conference call uh, for you guys. Um, hey, Steve, good morning. And then we can uh, you can put in the, the exact settings. Like I said, if you go in here, uh, these settings are in the in the call. Uh, but um, you can see that... Um, that I have the, where's it at? Let me turn this off real quick. Um, these are the exact settings that we gave in the conference call. Uh, we have the trend filter on Mark 2110. I have the 12, 24, 36, 1,000 last target. Hard stop of 21 ticks on a 20 Rinko. Uh, ATR 23 uh, for the first target. And then the last three targets at 36. Uh, you can play with these trails to get better performance if you want. You know, but um, this is a great place for you to start to, 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 you can go back and look at all the trades it took in this last, uh, since we rolled over to the June contract. Uh, on the big contract, on the big ES, these are the big contract ES results uh, as far as that goes. 
All right, so uh, feel free to do that as far as that goes. Uh, something we're getting out to traders, I'm going to show you what it looks like. Might as well show you right now. Um, we'll be getting this out once my PDF is done. I'm going to have about 50 pictures on this PDF. But let me go over what uh, the new toggle switch you're going to have. Uh, so where is it at? Uh, let me see. Let me get it real quick. JTrader1. So here it is. Uh, so when you bring this over, here's your toggle switch called, it's going to be a bull bear toggle switch. So when you toggle this switch on, uh, you can come up and put your upper and lower bull bear here. So here's going to be your bull. At, let's say you put your bull, I have it in the room at 40. So you just type in 40 here, very simple. You put your bear in at 65, and that tells me any sells below 65, any bulls above 40. You can change this, but when this bull and bear in toggle switch is on, it's going to ignore um, the, the retracement strength and all these different things that I showed you how to do already. Because right now we have this on like this for all this week's trading. I have a zero retracement strength, which takes uh, shallow retracements. Um, so this will, once that bull and bear is checked, it ignores these features up here and strictly goes on my oscillator uh, uh, with, uh, with with trend or without trend. If you don't want trend, check that off and it will take all trades. What that means is this. If I got bull bear checked, it's totally going to look at this setup. So what it's going to do is, is when you're into trades, show you when it's trading here so let's look at some trades here so what it's going to do is let's say if I got 40 and 65 these are my lines down here so uh, when you're trading this in the rooms the same way the red line is the bear line so that's bear right so you can do it with the automated strategy or it's going to be in the indicator to fire the arrow exactly where you put the bear and bull line at so that's your bear Right, 65 is bear. I'll go over exactly how this is going to work. This will work on the indicator. The indicator will have, I'm adding a WAV file. So, you know, what, what you know, uh, like I said, I like to do on the WAV file and the indicator. If, it, uh, if it's going up and you print an arrow that is a buy, uh, I like the bullseye sound. I did this with strategy uh, runner before. Bullseye if the arrow is long and then a submarine uh, tanking uh, if it's a sell. An alert when these arrows come up, but something uh, I'm putting a wave file in there for the indicator. It has a, a, a loud, obnoxious sound right now when the arrows fire off, but um, that's something you guys can do. But then the uh, lower line is bull, which is green, and what that uh, says if I stay above 40, since I put that 40 in that bull bear, then we're going to look for continuations to the upside. So let me get this real quick. Let me show you. So now. So you got a bull line and a bear line. So the bull line is the green line. And you can put this in the automated strategy and the bear is a red line. So what does that tell me? It tells me that if my, let's say you have the trend filter on. So the trend filters is simply, I have two strategies. I have one is the wave strategy, which is this. Caught that big 30 point potential run yesterday. Caught these also. Um, so you have the settings for that. But then I have also, I, I have the uh, MoMA, I'm sorry, this is the MoMA file, and then I have the WAVE file. The WAVE file has a triple filter in it, where it has triple trend. It has the uh, um, the zones, if it's red zone, you sell, green zone, you buy. And then the MoMA file doesn't have that, it just has moving averages. Well, if this moving average is crossed up, if my 20 is above my 110, which it was here, this strictly can look for buys. And then if my uh, 20 is crossed down through the 110, I'm sure you can look for sales. So the strategy, what we'll do is we'll look at, now it's a little bit more involved. I got speed bars in there, but I, want, I don't want to get into the speed bars. Those are exhaustion points where the market likes to reverse. That's already built into the indicator, but we don't have to really get into that, why these come up with the arrows. But I want to strictly make it simple, a bull and bear. So let's say we cross down right here, right? So it's cross down. We got the 20 crumbs across the other 110. The indicator will fire an automated arrow here on the indicator at this level, and it'll make an audible sound right there. Or the automated strategy will go short right there. Why? Because the bear is below my 65 that I put in under the strategy. So the bear is the red line. So when when the moving average cross down, right? I'm looking for the first retracement 
where this oscillator stays below 65 on the retracement. So once I get higher closes and open, which I'm getting higher close, these are green bars, green green goes. This is on the 120. Once I get the lower close and open and my oscillator is below 65, and then I get a speed bar. I have to have a speed bar that comes in there also, which is built into the program. That is a uh, catching wrongly positioned traders or counter trend traders. It's an exhaustion in price or what I call a volume spike. So, you know, Peter Stoudemire, who developed Market Profile, um, he used volume spikes to catch tops and bottoms after he created Market Profile. I do the same thing. I look for volume spikes on these reversals that's built into the program, which are called my speed bars, which I show in the room. So if I get a speed bar that comes there, then the arrow will fire. And more importantly, the I mean, uh, consequently, at the same time, you'll have the oscillators below 65. So that's when the arrow will fire on the indicator. So then we come down, price comes down, and as we retrace back up, the oscillator goes above my bear of 65 before I get a lower close and open because we're in a downtrend. I'm looking for lower closes and open or red bars to print, and I get above. So then on the wave strategy, if it's inside of my zone, red zone, that would be what's called an FZR trade, a full zone retracement. This is not a momentum trade, but that's an FZR trade. We do have an automated indicator for this also to put limit, not limit orders in, but first touch FZR trades, which we'll go over in the future conference calls. So that's a trade if you're trading FZR. But if you're strictly trading momentum with the bear, here's a trade entry, and here's the next entry. As the oscillator comes up, I'm below my 65. I have a lower close and open. After getting a retracement on higher closes and open, I get a speed bar that prints a volume spike in the market, indicating your exhaustion. My arrow fires, and that's a bear here also. So there's my two bears. I got a bear here also. That's a bear. It's below 65. That means there's weakness in the market. We use the oscillator different than how the oscillator was originally uh, um, a program. You know, a lot of traders use it above 80 to sell, below 20 to buy, oversold, overbought conditions. Uh, in my own personal opinion, that's absolutely the wrong way to use it. I, that, I like to buy high, educate traders to buy high, sell higher, short, low, buy lower. I do not like, um, uh, from my own experiences over the markets in the last 30 years, if a market's oversold, it can stay oversold for a long time. If it's overbought, it can stay overbought for a long time. So when I came up with this methodology of buying high and selling, buying high and selling higher, or shorting low, buying lower, I want to trade momentum or the weakness or the strength of the market. That's why this oscillator works so well with the my wave file and with my momentum file. And then my trailing ATRs, I got four of them that works really well with the market on catching these big long possible trends. So that being said, let's look at a bull. So the bull would be the opposite. A bull would be when by moving average crossover on the momentum file or the wave file, I am green zones, right? Green zones going up. So then this would be an FCR trade, a full zone retracement trade, because my oscillator gets below my uh, 40, meaning, meaning there's a deep pullback. It's price weakness going into my zone. So that would be an FCR, full zone retracement. You can do a limit, uh, not a limit, but a first touch of my zone for a limit, which we'll go over in future conference calls here. But if you strictly want to trade momentum, you can tell the strategy, hey, I don't even want to trade FCRs. I want to look for a momentum. So now as I'm moving higher, this oscillator, when I get a small pullback in price here, or small pullback in price here, these are tweezers, two dojis back to back are tweezers. So if I get a pullback there, then the oscillator, check out the oscillator. When I turned in a higher close and open, did, did the oscillator pull back below 40? No, that's a buy signal. Then you'll get an arrow, automatic arrow prints here. You have an audible alert that comes on your computer. Then an arrow will print there. So here again, the oscillator it had a small price uh, uh, pullback, uh, higher close and open. Uh, we had a volume spike, and then you get the oscillator above the bull. So that's why you get an arrow there. So here. You get a small pullback in price. Does the oscillator go below my 40? No, that means there's strength in the market. We don't use it like a lot of traders do. A lot of traders use it for overbought, oversold. That, to me, is totally the wrong way how to do it. 
I think all these books that are out there are totally teaching traders a wrong way how to use this. I totally teach it the opposite way. I'm using this for momentum. I'm not using this for overbought, oversold. I do like to use it on FCR trades for deep pullbacks, but I use it totally the different way than what is typically taught on a lot of the books and trade rooms out there. I use it for momentum trading. I don't use it for overbought, oversold. I think overbought, oversold uh, readings on these oscillators out there, they, they just don't work because you can get caught on a pullback in a market that just keeps pulling back, pulling back, pulling back. Or, you know, it's like if the market's rallying, you're trying to catch a, uh, a runaway train on trying to short the market. That's not very conducive to a winning trading plan. What's conducive to a winning trading plan is buying high, selling higher, trying to buy these pullbacks with strength, or trying to sell these pullbacks with weakness. And that's why the bull bear strategy works so well. So what I did is I put that into the strategy. So now you have it into the strategy. When you come into the strategy and the bull bear strategy, there's a J wave one right there. Now you have it as a toggle switch um, where you traders can toggle it on and you can dictate what your bull bear is. If you want deep pullbacks, that's fine. Um, I wouldn't go past 80 and 20. Um, that's how, uh, when I came out with this methodology, 80, 20 was my starting point. Um, if you're below 80 in a downtrend, that's a buy, a sell signal. If you're above 20 in an uptrend, that's a, a buy signal. If you're below 80 in a downtrend, that's a sell signal. But I take it a step further. What I like personally, my own, um, I, I call it a 50 midpoint. Um, I, I raise it to 65, but I like 65, 40. You know, it's two of my, my favorite pullback levels. You can do what you want. Uh, obviously, the software is open-ended where you can change these trailing ATRs to optimize your trail. You know, you can change your bull bear to what you want. But this is pretty accurate. I mean, there's your bull above 40. You can see how it stays below 65. You get these nice bear runs. So um, that's something that 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 you can do as far as, as as that goes. As far as the you know the the, the bull bear strategy and so on. Um, when you guys do that, all right. So um, that being said, I like trigger this back off. So that's this the, the strategies that we have as far as uh, that goes. Uh, you know, for you guys um, to uh, strategy and the indicator that you have. So yesterday, this was the indicator. Okay, the indicator it called a um, along here earlier in the morning in the zone. So here's my wave trader. The wave trader is different than the momentum trader I just showed you. Uh, you have two strategies you get with the package. You get uh, you get the wave trader and you get the strategy trade and the Momo trader. But then also you get the indicator. This indicator, when these arrows fire like this, an arrow fired here, you'll get an audible alert when this arrow fires. This means there's strength in the market. Now I went over this yesterday when it was trading live, how the market was gaining strength. I put bull here. I typed in bull for the members in the room. Uh, that means the market's in a stronger position. I kept telling traders, uh, our bias is up, it's not down. The market's in a stronger position. It's just was going sideways. We were inside of a symmetrical wedge. So this told me right here when the oscillator pulled back, I have above 40. I have, I have an 80 of big line, 20 down here, your standard oscillator. But then I have the 40 and 65. So you can see right there, it's trying to gain strength right there. You're in a stronger position. My my wave was up. My wave was up. This is a triple filter I got in here. So this is a triple filter that that prints these zones. These are FCR zones. Uh, if you see a spike like this, this is a good FCR zone that happened at 839. That's a great buy signal right there for an FCR. But when these arrows fired, it told you that you got a possible move up. The but I want to go over these supply demand lines. I specifically designed these supply demand lines to work with my Renko bars. So my previous supply demand lines worked with pretty much every bar type, but they weren't very accurate on Renko. So what I did is I had to change it to find gaps in the market. Now these supply lines that come with the software are absolutely stunning when you see big gaps in the market. So what happened yesterday when we were in the uh, trade room? Um, I was Talking on the mic here, I drew this stuff up right here. I drew this up right when price action was down here at this level. And I said we're in a stronger position because we're an oscillator, did not pull back. 
Here also, I talked about how we're in a stronger position here. The, the market's in a stronger position, so I mark these up as bull. Why did I do that? I said we're in a stronger position to buy us up. You can do this on your own. It's not hard when I try to explain it to you right here. So market's in a stronger position. Why did I say that? Because my oscillator is above 40, and my arrow automatically printed here. My arrow automatically printed here. So I got two bull signals with my triple trend zone that's saying we're going higher. All right? So that's one piece of the puzzle that let me know that this thing possibly could rocket ship up. All right? Now, however, we were in a Smetchka wedge, right? So I drew up a Smetchka wedge for you guys. And I drew it up and I said, hey, we're in a Smetchka wedge right here. Smetchka wedge is when you have two higher lows and two lower highs. Connect the dots. Smetchka wedge. And I said, if we take the distance between the Smetchka wedge, which I did, and you can put it on top of the breakout and or the breakdown, whichever happens first. I said that we have a potential for a nice move coming up if we break out. So this is when the supply demand lines, I drew these in. I drew the supply, here's the resistance, and here's the support. So I said we have 16 points upside and 16 points downside in the S&P. I don't care which way it breaks. I prefer it breaks no matter what with obviously our zone. If our zone's up, our bias is up, right? So we want to break out here to go to here. <clears throat> or if the zone turned red, it, we could have broke down here from, from here down to my 98 target. So I drew these up yesterday before we even broke out at this level. This is where, I, where price, price action was trading in between here. I'm going to show you how predictive these supply demand lines are. So this is where price action was when I drew these up. And I said, there, there's my resistance for this morning. And here's my support for this morning. So it's, it's for today and tomorrow, or yesterday and today. I said, if we break through here, resistance, then my target is a big gap in the market. Now, this is where supply-demand comes in. It's very important to understand this because this is where it comes in to play. If you see a gap in the market of supply-demand, th these are fresh supply-demand lines. Now, traders don't really understand what supply-demand is, so I'll explain it to you, why these lines are drawn in. If I go back where this line originated, if I keep going back, this is a line originated right here. Why? Why did this line originate at that level and start at this level? Because what I use, it's uh, with market profile, it's about accumulation distribution, right? So the supply and demand lines are the same thing. It looks at accumulation distribution of the market. So there's a lot of accumulation distribution because this is where the market turned. This is where it turned from having a major uptrend, you can see here, into a major downtrend. You see that? Just like here, here's where the market turned from major uptrend downtrend. This is where this supply, this is where this demand started, because that is where the major turn happened. All right, that's where the accumulation distribution really heavily got accumulated, distributed in that level to get the turn. So these become these levels then become very predictive in nature. Here, this is where a major accumulation distribution happened. Look at all this accumulation distribution in here, and then then you got this predictive. Of, uh, of long here and protective short right here. So these are very, very accurate in the Ricos because now I can find holes in the market. So now, if you look at yesterday when I put that up, let's get this pocket filled off. I sent these charts out to you, mark these up. So now, what happened? Old supply, old supply line becomes new demand line once it breaks through. So, so what you can do is now you can say, hey, when you get into your into your into your uh, markets, you can look at per marking. Say, hey, I want to see what I have above me or below me. Well, I noticed yesterday, and I marked this up for you traders. I said, look, I marked this exact stuff up. I said, hey, we have a resistance uh, of forty one forty. If it breaks through here, my target is forty one sixty six and a quarter. You know why? Because there's nothing above me. So what I typed in in the room is I typed in this is where all the buy, all the buy stops will start happening. This is where all the buy stops will start happening, and that just drives price higher. If we get below demand, then all the sell stops would happen here, and it drives price lower. It's all about supply and demand. So you got to know where the buy stops and sell stops are. So if I see big gaps in the market on my supply and demand, I'm, I, I pretty much can, can anticipate that the, these sellers at this resistance level, this, this supply level, 
once they get through this, they got protective buy stops just above here. Then when the protective buy stops get through, see these buy stops are getting eat up right here, eat up, eat up, eat up. So when these buy stops start clicking, guess what happens with price? It's a self-fulfilling prophecy because uh, be what happens, you go straight up, you get moving up, and then you get all these buy stops that start happening. This happens on a weekly basis. You'll be, see thousands, thousands, and thousands of charts like this because what happens is once it gets through the buy stops, once it gets through the sell stops, the market goes vertical. So when you see big gaps in the market like this, that means you have no resistance above you. So then when you get a buy signal, when the arrow fires, which you did there, I got a tweezer trade. This is where my automated strategy, strategy got long. It ran up actually 30 potential points for you guys yesterday. And then you can see that you get a big, nice, strong move to the upside. Um, and my target hit at 66 and a quarter for a nice move from 11 all the way into the close. So it just, you can use these levels to dictate when you see big gaps in the market. Now you can skinny it down also. What I like to do, I like to skinny it down. And I like to see where there's no resistance above or below. So I know if I get back inside of 66 and a quarter and my zones turn red, do I have a big gap in the market still? Yes. Why? Because if you know anything about market profile or anything about uh, uh, how this market, the, the market is orderly, there's called low volume nodes and high volume nodes in the market. High volume nodes are where you see the market has a lot of accumulation distribution like this. Low volume nodes are where you have no resistance above or below uh, below you. These are all. This is all low volume nodes on market profile. If you break market profile down and you look at all the accumulation distribution for the whole day, you'll see there's no resistance right here. So no resistance means if I get back below 66 this morning, guess what price can do? It can cut all the way back down three and come all the way back down to 40 today. So now I can come straight back down to 40 because now these are all low volume nodes. Now I got no resistance, right? So I got no support. So if I roll over here and I turn red on my zone, then we're looking for a move down to do that also. All right. Uh, the fibs usually match up. Uh, th these do match up with 62% retracement, 38% retracement, 76% retracement. Yes, it does happen. Yep. All right. So, but the the key is is that is that look for gaps in the market. These are great for targets. They're very predictive in nature. Supply and demand works very well, but that comes with the software also. But I want to make sure you understand that you know how to, you're, you're trading it correct, the correct way.